Thanks, Aubrey, for Thank being you. here. Thanks for having me. Yes. Hello to you, folks. And hello to the virtual crowd out there. I was just revisiting this song. It's an old, old Scottish song called Bogie's Bonnie Bell. I was singing it last week by the river where I live in Rhode Island with my mother who's in a nursing home. And it was a, a beautiful reminder of all these old songs that we sing in our family, the, how it's like the soundtrack of our lives. And my mother was really listening to the story and all the words and the beautiful imagery. It's, it's kind of a sad one, but most Celtic songs are pretty sad. So. love those words it's so so evocative the imagery with pots and pans and ladles he scours the country round and there's a great deal to unpack in that song that's the type of song that we would discuss thoroughly in class the the culture the history where that song has traveled and it's the old scots irish songs that travel to a place like this to to western north carolina um, i learned a lot of my songs in my dancing and my instrumentation at the Heinemann Settlement School in Heinemann, Kentucky, which has historical connections to the John C. Campbell Folk School. 
So I have a lot of friends in Kentucky. And um, this one was written by my friend Daniel Dutton in Somerset, Kentucky. And I always have to do this for Morning Song because it is called Morning Song. <laughs> and we have a Phoebe singing in the background. And that, that's one of my favorite birds, so how perfect. Let the song of joy awaken the sleeping land. Through the shadows, dawn comes streaming. The early birds begin their singing in the dew. Upon the webs of light, quivers cool and sweet. Son, I pray, let my life begin today. I will go with beauty round me. Dark nights and cloudy sorrows return at last to the sunny skies of love. Troubled dreams, fold your wings and vanish all the fears. And pass. You told your heart there is no answer, lies cannot hide. Time is a gift, receive it grateful. Son, I pray, let my life begin today. I promise I will go with beauty round me. Cloudy sorrows return at last to the sunny skies of love. Well, here it comes, big red sun ball rising. Hail, hail to the morning. Let the song of joy awaken the sleeping land. Shadows dawn come streaming, the early birds begin their singing in the dew upon the webs of light, quivers cool and sweet. Sun, I pray, let my life begin today. I promise I will go with beauty round me. Dark nights and cloudy sorrows return at last to the sunny skies of love. I want to tell my class this morning when we meet how lovely it is to be here again and to be immersed in this world. And we're having marvelous conversations and we're covering all kinds of repertoire in the banjo class. I've been teaching at the folk school for 26 years and I've, it's been a very important part of my life. Even though I live in Rhode Island, it's a thousand mile drive, 999 miles from my house. And, um, it's such a wonderful way to mark the years and the evolution of our culture, of technology, of the music and dance. And so it feels particularly good this year for reasons that are probably obvious to be live with each other and to be having these exciting conversations. And the way I teach the classes, I have an agenda, but I never know in what order we're going to do things. We, we just let it unfold all week. And it, it's very exciting, and I feel the, the passion, the excitement, and the interest in the class is very palpable, and it's, it's a nice feeling. I, I, I felt us by yesterday afternoon really 
really starting to connect and bond with each other. I mean, I don't know. You, you can tell me later if you feel the same way or, or if it's just me. I don't know. But um, pretty fascinating history here in Western North Carolina and as Charmaine alluded to, to the folk school. And the tradition of singing in the morning um, has a lot to do with group participation. And so let's, let's visit a song that comes out of an archive in Rhode Island, a Rhode Island folk song. I do lots and lots of watery songs. And um, I live right on the salt water, on a working waterfront in Rhode Island. And so I have a whole lot of songs that are sea shanties, seafaring songs. This one is about a really feisty lighthouse keeper who started keeping lighthouse in the 1800s at the age of 15, and she was a girl. Her father was the lighthouse keeper, but he was unwell, and she did it for decades and finally got recognized, because back then females didn't get recognized. Um, she rode her siblings to school every morning, and she saved numerous lives, and she really loved it out there. I think she was an introvert, and she got very famous, and people tried to visit her on this island about the size of this open house, and I don't think she was too happy about that. <laughs> So there's some words in here for you to, to sing along. And cheerly row, not cheerily, this is written in 1870, so it's very sentimental. Cheerly row, cheerly row. Um, so, uh, let me see if I, I'm just going to sing it, and you, you catch on. I'm, I was going to try to dissect it for you. But. <clears throat> My home is on a craggy rock by the dark and briny sea. the changing tide and wild winds whistle free and here in grave or gayer mood I on the waters float and cheerily row and cheerily row my bonny bonny boat and cheerily row and cheerily row my bonny so that's your part. I'm going to sing it again. And here in grave or gayer mood, I on the waters float. And cheerily row, and cheerily row, my bonny, bonny boat. And cheerily row, and cheerily row, my bonny, bonny boat. Here I can watch the sportive fish and seabirds skimming nigh and watch the proud and stately ships all o'er blue waters fly and here in grave or gayer mood I on the waters float and cheerly row and cheerly row my body With 
love of thee, my rocky wave-bound home. And here in grave or gayer mood, I on the waters float. And cheerly row, and cheerly row, my bonny, bonny boat. And cheerly row, and cheerly row, my bonny, Nice singing. <laughs> Although I am a native Rhode Islander, my connections to Appalachia go back about 120 years in my family. My grandfather and great-grandfather owned and operated coal mines in West Virginia to help supply coal to the textile mills of New England. So it's an interesting and checkered past for my family. I was very worried about telling people about that when I would come to Eastern Kentucky, for example. And then I learned over time that nobody cared. <laughs> I wasn't that important. But um, it's been an interesting thing to explore in terms of uh, the history of the coal industry. And while I'm not going to do a song pertaining to that today, that's a swath of repertoire that my husband and I do together. Coal mine protest songs, etc. But I, I was very interested in Appalachia ever since I was a child because of the stories I would hear and the references while I was growing up in Rhode Island. So in 1992 I decided that I wanted to meet Jean Ritchie and she, in my opinion, was one of the most important traditional folk singers in American music. And I drove to the Heinemann Settlement School in Heinemann, Kentucky to attend a week-long event. I was just hell-bent on meeting her, and I did. And we became friends, and she was a mentor and role model for the rest of her life for me. Um, for 23 years, I knew her. So the Ritchie family, they had a connection here. Um, one of the daughters married Leon Deschamps, who was, was the guy who built some of the stone buildings. He was an architect, I be, believe a landscaped architect as well. So um, there's a connection here. And that's one of the ways that the dulcimer was brought into Western North Carolina, was through the Ritchie family and the connection here. I'm going to play the old fashioned style that the Ritchies played with a noter with a stick. And I'm going to do a, another seafaring song about another feisty teenager. Um, and in this case, she disguises herself as a boy to join the Navy. And you'll see what happens. And sing along.
something a little different this morning and read you a poem I just wrote. I know that at times there are poetry classes here. In fact, one of my friends, Dana Wildsmith, has taught here for many years. She's from Georgia. And um, I, I've written several books of poetry. One of them is called Don't Bother the Phoebe. So I love that we've been hearing a Phoebe throughout this program. This is a poem. I, I just wrote this a couple weeks ago, and it's a true story about a loved one who survived a very challenging medical time. It's called Two Years After. I'm just gonna wait for that vehicle. Such a common thing to see a relative incidentally on the street mailing a letter. I spot him from my car at the busy intersection near the smoothie place and his sweet Victorian house with the Airbnb, his form distant in my side view mirror. The traffic is slow and I'm glad. I can watch at my leisure this brown figure. He apparently is wearing all brown today right down to his hair and eyes. Walking on this cool September day, robust, slender, turning into a vanishing stick figure, strolling home to get back to work, probably, at his desk. I see at once the child, the man, as I view this little movie in my mirror, a miracle in real time, real life. It could be anybody at this moment, but it's not anybody. It's him, and he has lived, and now he has mailed a letter and is walking back home. All right, so I'm actually teaching banjo this week. Here's a song we're going to be learning, or I've already presented it a little bit. Polly put the kettle on. It's got references to dance moves. It's not a coherent dance, however. <laughs> and in about 100 years ago, when people were recording records in Bristol, Tennessee, like the Carter family, they would do these type of entertainment pieces where it, it would evoke the idea of a, of a barn dance, but um, they were more like entertainment, um, and so that's why the dance part's not really coherent. It's called Polly Put the Kettle On.
change my strings the the weather makes them sound a little funky sometimes people say what the heck are you doing when you're doing this what is that and that that's french canadian and in rhode island speaking of the textile industry there are lots of folks of french canadian extraction in rhode island because they were recruited by the textile industry to work there in the 19th century and and on so there's been a living tradition for generations of fiddling and singing and dancing. And this is that foot percussion. There are a bunch of different French terms for it. Charmaine was saying the other day, um, poto rhythme or tape à pied or battement à pied. There's a bunch of different terms. Um, it's not usually done with tap shoes, <laughs> so I'm a little more flamboyant. But it's fun to combine um, a tradition I've learned in Rhode Island with the, the Kentucky style claw hammer banjo technique that I learned in Hindman, Kentucky. I also learned to flat foot in Hindman. And then over the years, I got the bug for it. And everywhere I would go, if I met dancers, I would ask them to show me steps. Right here in Rastown, North Carolina, I learned this one. And, and let me see, the Applejack. So in Kentucky, all those years ago, I learned the very basic two-sounded walking step. I learned a step called the Indian that some people have changed to the Cherokee. It's thought to come from Cherokee ceremonial dance. The chug is thought to have African-American roots. So when we look at American clogging, or I call myself a freestyle flatfoot clogger, we're talking about European, Anglo-Celtic, Native American and African roots. Isn't that cool? So over time, I learned the very simple flat footing steps. And then I learned to make more sounds underneath my feet. And then I eventually got tap shoes. I had leather sole shoes for a long time. Like, just get one. Ooh, there's the bell. I won't keep you too long. Like, I just added one toe sound in there. Added a heel on my left side. Added the other toe, the other heel. And that's the Tennessee walking step that you could say is the time step of the particular dance form that I do. There's lots of kinds of percussive dance all over the world. You got gaucho dancing or in South America, flamenco in Spain, gumboot dancing in South Africa, English clogging, Irish step. You know, you gotta do that. You gotta tap. You can see they all have their own variations and technique. And every step I do has some kind of story. Like one year I was at the Ozark Folk Center and I was watching people dance and they call it jig dancing there. And this tall, slim guy, he was, he was 11 feet tall. <laughs> and I saw him do the wheel. Oh, no. <laughs> So I learned how to do that. Fred Astaire always said, do everything equally on both sides of the body. He didn't say that to me, but. <laughs> and 
I can also do both legs at once. I just don't really feel like it right now, but I could if I wanted to. <laughs> All right, let me play you a tiny little tune and then we'll all go to breakfast. How's that? A little bit of old Joe Clark. I'm glad I checked. <laughs> if you want to dance with me, please do. Everybody get up and try that. Thank you for joining me, everybody.